Assalamualaikum and hello everyone. Welcome to video of 1.3 factors affecting reaction rate. Where in this video, we're going to learn to state our Hini's equation and explain the relationship between the temperature and activation and get to the rate constant based on the Hini's equation and determine the order of rate constant, activation of energy, temperature and Hini's constant using the Hini's equation by calculation and law. So on your nose, we'll be on page 22. Okay, consider here the rate equation. For a given equation, now we can write down the rate law. The rate law is equal to K, the rate constant, times the concentration of reactant raised to some power. Okay, the power actually refers to the order of the reaction. Okay, so here it mentioned that the rate equation shows the effect of changing the concentration of the reactants on the rate of the reaction. Okay, so but then we learn uh, at the start of 1.3, we also know that the catalyst, the temperature, the size, the pressure does affect the um, rate of reaction itself. Okay, so that is about the factors of the reaction rate. Now what we're going to look at is actually the factors um, affecting the rate constant, our K. So that's why we're going to look at the Arrhenius equation where is where it is the mathematic expression for the effect of temperature on the rate constant. But actually, we can also see the effect of our activation energy as well. Okay, so what is our Arrhenius equation? Arrhenius equation is E, uh, stands for our Arrhenius constant. E here is our natural log exponent, our exponent lah. Uh, negative EA. EA stands for our activation energy, where the activation energy, the unit must be in joule per mole. Okay, I like to emphasize here, uh, please write in your notes, the unit is joule per mole. Because sometimes the question like to ask you uh, to state the activation energy in kilojoule per mole. So then we have to divide when you substitute the value into this formula, then we have to divide by 1000 lah. Next is R, universal gas constant is 8.314 joule per mole per Kelvin. Previously, when we're talking about R, usually we use uh, chapter 1, chapter 5, sorry, semester 1, 0 0.0806 can. Okay, but right now for chapter 1, our R is 8.314 joule per Kelvin per mole. Okay, and then for the T, temperature itself, it is, in it is the absolute temperature which is in Kelvin. Okay, so why the EA must in must be in joule per mole? Because our rate constant here does not have any unit. Okay, so it means that for all of this, it must the unit must be cancelled out. So for example, here what I have is EA over RT. So R I know that is actually in uh, joule per mole per Kelvin, right? And the temperature is Kelvin. So we know that this per Kelvin and Kelvin can be cancelled out. Okay, so how do we cancel out jo Joule per mole? And here must be Joule per mole as well. Lah. So then we can cancel it out. Uh, if it's in kilojoule, the question give you the information kilojoule. So you have to add lah, uh, times exponent 3 Joule per mole. Okay. So that is actually about our Arrhenius equation. Right now what we're going to look at is the effect of our temperature and our activation energy on our rate constant. Okay, so the first one what I'm going to look at is actually the effect of temperature. So sometimes when we look at the effect, um, sometimes it's quite vague. So what we like to do is actually uh, substitute all the value here into the equation. So A, I'm going to substitute 1, EA is 100, R is 8.314. Okay, but then in this case, when we're talking about relationship between K and T, okay, for these two cases, we're going to look at where we will substitute two different values of T. So when I substitute all the values here, when T, when temperature is 10 Kelvin, my rate constant is 0 0.3. But when the temperature is 20 Kelvin, my rate constant is 0 0.54. So as we can see, as T increases, uh, my K increases. So here, when temperature T increases, the term E negative E R E A over R. T. So here it means this term lah. Okay, and because we know it is 1 kan, the value of A, we substitute it as 1. So as we can see actually the term, uh, it's actually the this term is 0 0.3 and this term is 0 0.54. So we can see that the term itself increases and the value of rate constant also increase. So that is the effect of our temperature on rate constant. 
Next, we're going to look at the effect of activation energy on the rate constant. Okay, again, right now, I'm going to substitute the values. Okay, so here E1, R8.314, T is 10 Kelvin. But what I'm going to change is actually my EA. Here is 100. Uh, the second one, uh, eh, T block. Here is actually my EA is 200 Joule per mole. So, when you substitute all the values, you will get this answer. Okay, as we can see, when our activation energy increases, uh, my K decrease. So what happened here is that when the activation energy increases, we have to explain the term itself. Here, the value will decrease. Hence, the value of rate constant also decrease. Okay, so for the factors affecting rate constant, uh, there are only two factors we're going to look at. Temperature and activation energy. Okay, so that is for the factors. Next, what we're going to look at is actually how to use the um, the formula itself. Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is in the case of our um, graph. Okay, so how to plot the graph? So this is actually our Arrhenius equation. So um, how to use it in the graph? So first thing first, what we're going to do is actually learn on both sides. So here when we learn on both sides, here we got learn E, yeah? so it will be cancelled out. So negative EE over RT, it's still there. And then from here, we're going to rearrange it to get Y equal to MX plus C. Okay, for the MX plus C, then you know that your Y must be ln K. Okay, your M, your gradient, you will get your negative EE over R. Okay, since the, your M is negative, so that's why your graph will get a negative slope. Okay, again, remember that the activation energy, I like to emphasize, you will get joule per mole. Okay, and then for your for your x-axis, it's not T straight away, it's, it is 1 over T. And your y-intercept must be on T. Okay, so that is actually the introduction. So, Let's straight away do the um, uh, exercise. So, for example, number one, it asks you the rate constant for the composition of hydrogen iodide are uh, given in the table below. Determine the activation energy for the decomposition graphically. So, it means that to determine the activation energy, you must determine from graph method, graphical method. Okay, and then your activation energy, let's look here. Here is your activation energy. It depends, uh, we can find the EA from your gradient. So, uh, whether you like it or not, you have to do the graph. Okay, so here is the, um, uh, is the here is the information given. So, we have our temperature and rate constant. So, this is K. But then, uh, this is my temperature, sorry. So, my temperature here, uh, it is T. But then, here, what I would like to do for x, it is 1 over t. So, what I would like to do is for this, we're going to divide by 1, 1 divided by t. We're going to find out for the x-axis, we have to find out lah, 1 over t for each 5, 600, 700, 800. And my rate constant, my k, okay, but my y-axis is ln k. So, what we have to do is actually, we have to learn all of these values. Okay, so, uh, I have calculated it. Uh, first, so this is actually the value that you will get. This is the value. Okay, make sure first, once you have uh, draw the new table, uh, just for you to not get uh, any more confused, uh, label which one is the y-axis, which one is the x-axis. Okay, but then for 1 over T, is 1 over temperature, it is 1 over Kelvin, kan? So the unit is per Kelvin. For any long value, so for example, uh, during your first order reaction, can learn concentration. Okay, for learn concentration, for example, any uh, you won't get uh, a unit lah. It will be unitless. So that's why for learn K, you have no U. Okay, next for this value, what we're gonna do next is actually we're gonna plot it. Okay, but then when you check it again, okay, your x value is here. So x is here, but your y is all the negative, negatively um, signed. So, your graph would be like this lah. This is your x, this will be your y. Again, um, for the chemistry, you don't have to like start from zero. You can do the jagged line. Okay, so let's look here. I have uh, drawn it 
first, hmm, I don't have drawn it beforehand. So this will be your bra. Again, here is my zero. Here I'm gonna start straight to one point two, and this one for my negative negative two until uh, negative twenty. Uh, so once you plot it, you won't get um usually you get a straight line lah. For the case of my Ahinis equation, we will get a straight line with a negative slope. Okay, so once you have uh, uh, draw the graph, so what you, what should we do next? So, what we're going to do is actually remember, the question is to determine the activation energy for the decomposition of hydrogen iodide. So, activation energy here is actually, uh, you can uh, get it from your gradient. So, next what we're going to do is actually determine the gradient. So, that's why I'm drawing it here. Uh, the biggest one is actually from the point number one and the last point here. So, I'm just going to label it here. So, here is my one. Oh. And here is my two. Okay, next what we're going to do is actually I'm going to find out the gradient itself. So, remember that for the gradient, it will be y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So, this is actually the value of your m. Okay, but then how do we get the activation energy? Okay, and then we do get our negatively sign. So, what happened next is actually, okay, remember, okay, your m is actually your negative Ea over r. So, we're going to write down m is m equal to negative Ea over r. So, negative Ea is your unknown. R is your gas constant. So, what is the uh, gas constant? It's 8.314. So, here is actually 8.314. Okay, but then from here, you can see here we have negative sign. So, here we have negative sign as well. Actually, we can cancel it out. Dun, dun. So, our activation energy, you will get 186674. Okay. Then, how about the unit? Remember, the unit is actually... Ea is joule per mole. So here is joule per mole. Okay, but then the question, the question here give you 186 kilojoule per mole. Okay, uh, but then the question does not specifically mention that you have to answer it in kilojoule per mole. You don't have to change lah. But if you want to change, uh, no problem. But then remember, when you substitute the value into this, uh, into this formula, what you're going to get is actually the unit is joule per mole. Then you're going to divide it by 1000, then you'll get 186 kilojoule per mole. Okay, so for this kind of question, it's quite, uh, it has few steps because you have to determine the gradient as well. Lah. Then you have to change it. Okay, so I believe for question 2, I believe you could try it yourself. Okay, but then uh, question 2 here. Remember that your temperature here, uh, your T here must be in Kelvin. Uh, T here must be in Kelvin. But the question here gives you T in degree Celsius. So what you should do to change degree Celsius to Kelvin, you have to press 27315 to get the value for the, uh, uh, the value for the temperature in Kelvin. And then your T. So make sure that it is in line. Okay, so if you do not get um the um penny, the accurate the exact same value, if you get 187, 183 is fine because it's actually when uh the value of it is actually from your graph, uh, it can be quite flexible, uh, it has some ranges to it. We have learned about the Arrhenius equation using graphical method. Okay, right now what we're going to look at is actually how about if the reaction conducted at two different di two different temperature. Okay, so as we can see here, maksud dia we're going to use this equation tapi where we have uh, lon both side. Okay, and then here is at temperature 1, here is at temperature 2. Okay, once we rearrange it, kita akan buat dia equal to ln A. Ni pun kita buat jadi equal to ln A. Okay, why do we do so? Sebab kita nanti nak equalkan this one is equal to this one. So, hence we get this equation. Okay, and then if we rearrange balik, yang K1 on our left hand side and dengan the one with the temperature is on our right hand side. 
Okay, last but uh, last kali our formula akan dapat macam ni lah. Ln K1 divided by K2 equal to activation energy divided by gas constant 1 over T2 divided by 1 over T1. Okay, so K1 dengan K2, you need dia tu tengok lah selalunya dia akan bagi lah. So, it's no problem for you. Uh, activation energy, you need dia must be in joule per mole. Your R is joule per mole per Kelvin. And temperature ni must be in per Kelvin. So, penting kamu ingat ni K1 divided by K2 tapi kat sini T2 minus T1. Here, okay, make sure activation energy ni mesti in joule per mole. Kalau dia bagi kilo joule per mole, so kena tukarkanlah kepada joule per mole. We're going to substitute that value. Okay, so let's look at question number one. Okay, so first what I'm going to do, I'm just going to apa ni, extract all the information. So we have the activation energy, but remember it must be in joule per mole. So I'm just going to uh, change it straight away. Okay, and then what are the information that we have? Dia bagi dekat sini, this is our temperature and this is our rate constant. So, for the temperature, must be in Kelvin. So, kita akan tukar the temperature into Kelvin, which is plus 273.15. Hence, this is our temperature in Kelvin and this is our K1. So, maknanya at that temperature, this is the rate constant. Okay, so the question asks you the rate constant apa when temperature is 600 degrees Celsius. But then we have to change it into Kelvin again. And then we're going to find K2. So next what we're going to do is we're going to use the formula and then we will sub substitute this straight away. Okay, so this is my K1. K2 and actually EA. And E2, R is a constant 8.314. T2 here and T1 is this one. So again, direct substitution. Okay, so for the calculation, what I would like to do adalah mi suka buat one step by step. Okay, sebab in exam, contohnya in exercise, so you do have the final answer. But in exam, mana ada final answer kan? Kalau ada bukan exam lah tu. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do it step by step. So sekarang ni, Okay, nak hilangkan ln. So, I'm going to exponentkan this value. Ex, uh, shift ln this value. Then, my K2 is equal to. Okay, how about the unit? Okay, unit kita kena tengok the unit of K lah. Sebab kalau K1 unit, K1 dengan K2 unit dia will be the same. So, K1 unit dia adalah molar per second. Hence, the unit of K2 is molar per second. Okay, question 2. Okay, so dia bagi dekat sini. T1 is 100 degree Celsius. Which is have to change into K. And when the question kata the 4 times faster. So, maknanya the rate constant K1 dia adalah equal to 4. And when the temperature 2 dia adalah 30 degree Celsius. Ataupun Kelvin. Change it to Kelvin. K2 dia is equal to 1. So, 4 times faster. Okay. And then, what the question 1 adalah activation energy. Okay, and then the activation energy is this value. We will get this one. So, how, how about the unit? Unit of uh, activation energy is joule per mole. But then the question asks you, calculate the energy of activation energy in kilojoule per mole. So, tak boleh tukar joule per mole lah. Kena ambil kilojoule per mole. So, which is equal to 18.63 kilojoule per mole. 